We're going to discuss briefly algebraic notation in quantum mechanics. This is going to be a very simple introduction and should be watched in conjunction with several of the other videos. Now, if we're thinking about ordinary vectors that you will have encountered, um, say, for Cartesian coordinates, then you should be familiar with the idea of writing a general vector A in terms of some basis vectors. So let's say we would write that as AX, X plus AY, Y plus AZ, Z. Uh, notice that I do my Z's with a little curly tail so they're not confused with threes. Um, since we have three dimensions, we could equally well write this as A1, um, and then let's say we're going to call the basis vector along X E1, plus A2, uh, E2, plus a3, E3. Um, and notice that those are threes, not Zs. And of course, to save time, we could now write that as a sum over I of A, I, E, I. Now, if you recall uh, matrices, then if we were going to write a matrix a vector operation, then we might write something like a vector B is given by the action of a matrix, and I tend to write matrices with a double underline, this notation varies, um, acting on the vector A. Um, so that might be a rotation of a vector or, or any other equivalent operation. Um, and in terms of components, we would write um, B subscript I is equal to M. Uh, so I just made a mistake there. Um, we need to put a sum in there. Um, that's equal to the sum over, let's say, J of M, I, J, A, J. This is absolutely standard, um, and if you're not confident with it, you should go and revise matrix vector notation, because one of the things that we're going to be discovering in this course is that quantum mechanics can be formulated in terms of matrices and vectors. For quantum mechanics, we use a slightly different notation. Um, for the vector, we're going to write um, psi, um, and we're going to write it inside an angle bracket like this. This is called a ket. Um, you can see more about this in videos on Dirac notation. Um, now, in the same way that we wrote A as a sum of the basis vectors EI, I'm going to write the ket of psi as a sum over I, um, though, of course, I can go to more than three. You should remember that. Let's say CI, um, and then I'm going to use a basis vector called phi subscript I. Um, and sometimes, in order to make things easier to write, we're going to write that as ci, and then I'm just going to label the basis vector by i. I'm not going to include the phi. Um, that is, of course, equivalent to um, c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 plus dot dot dot. Um, and that should be obvious. The reason I'm spelling that out is because there is often some confusion about the sums and what you can take into or out of a sum. Now, I'm going to move to a new page, um, and we're going to think about how we would act with something called an operator. Now, this has exactly the same effect as a matrix in matrix vectors, though, of course, this is a quantum mechanical operator, so it's rather more subtle than a matrix. Um, and we can actually write, for instance, a vector chi is equal to the action of an operator A on a vector or a ket psi, in exactly the same way that we wrote B is equal to M acting on A. Um, now, if we were going to write that, um, we would then write that that's equal to A acting on the sum over I of CI ket I, where ket is just this right-hand angled bracket. Let's just expand that out. So we write that as A hat acting on, and put brackets, and we're going to have a C1, um, and then ket, oops, that's a ket 1, plus C2, ket 2, plus dot, dot, dot. My dots aren't coming out. And those are round brackets. And then we can take A inside the bracket um, in the same way that we would with numbers. Um, that relies on a rather fundamental part of quantum mechanics we won't be covering. And that's equal to C1 A hat acting on 1 plus C2 A hat acting on 2 plus dot 
dot dot close round brackets which is actually equal to the sum over i of c i a hat on ket the vector i. So you see that we can bring a inside the sum but we cannot take anything with the index of the sum outside it. This is a very important point uh, which is frequently misunderstood and I'm just going to write this in red. Um, we cannot take anything, any object, with the label that is the index, the i, outside the sum. That's a very important point to hold on to. So what we've done here is just given a very brief, very simple introduction to the idea of sums and vectors and algebraic notation in quantum mechanics. As I've said, this should be watched in conjunction with details about Dirac notation um, and all of the rest of the, the apparatus that we will develop, but I hope that this will give you um, a brief insight, a basic understanding of how we work with the sums.